for this lesson, I just dropped these assets into the world object template. And I just did that real quick so you wouldn't have to rewatch something you've already learned. So now let's import these lasers. We'll grab the sprite sheet that we made and just drag that in. And just make sure this JSON file is in the same folder. Because as soon as you drag this in, it'll recognize it as a sprite sheet. And you'll see here under config, this is selected. And then we can turn off compression here. And now we need an animation player or an animation sequence. We'll rename this anim laser. And for the texture, we just need the laser. And we'll have it set to loop. The frame rate can be something slower like 12. And now make a new material. And this will be matte laser. The shader type will be flat and the diffuse will be the laser or the anim laser. And let's actually put this onto something. So in the scene null, I'm gonna add a plane. I'll drag it up here and make it larger. And in materials, we'll just add that laser mat. And there we go. The laser looks great, it's looping. It feels like it's seamless because it's going fast enough. If anything, we can turn up the frame rate just a little bit. And we're not gonna get too crazy in the filter build out itself, but let's add a quick little object tap that kind of emits this laser. So first let's add a null in the scene null. And we'll call this laser scale. And we'll position this right at the source of the laser, which I guess will be kind of in this top area. And then the laser should sit right above that. And of course, make sure this laser is inside of the null. So now when we scale this null, the laser goes from this tiny little point and then it shoots up as it grows wider. And of course you can make this as big as you want. So to make it interactive, we're gonna right click down here and add an object tap. And the object will be the trifecta model, which is already down here. So I'll just kind of rough this over. So now if we tap on this, you can see the little dot right here illuminate. That means it's sending a pulse every time it's tapped. Now, when we do get a tap, we want to play an animation. And the animation will control a transition. And this will be a vector three because we're using the scale and it will influence the laser scale up here. So we'll click scale here connect this up and we want this curve to be a little smoother so let's do cubic in and out and then we're starting at zero that's why it disappeared and we're ending at one maybe let's put that at two and let's see what happens yeah that seemed to have worked Now, if you want to tap to have it come back in, we have to add a little bit more logic. So let's create a switch. And this object tap will change the switch from on to off. And so this is going to output a Boolean. So now we have to take that Boolean and add it to a pulse patch. And what this patch does is send a pulse every time this gets switched on or switched off. So when it's turned on, we want to play, and when it's turned off, we'll reverse it. So let's reset and see if this works. So one click, plays, and then the second tap should turn the switch off, which will turn off this pulse, which should send a pulse into the reverse. And it did.
and it's a little slow, maybe 0.5 seconds is a little more laser-like. Pew! And the beauty about using a texture like this for lasers is that in the y-axis, if you increase the scale a lot, it doesn't really break the texture, and yet you get this really long laser effect. And when you scroll in, it just looks like, you know, it's a really fast laser. So that's one nice trick with this. You can, you know, increase this to 60 even, and it still, you know, holds up really well. You can't even tell it's stretching. So that's just a neat trick to use, you know, a simple kind of short laser texture, but scale it really long. And that's it for this lesson.